When you work with firewalls on Linux systems, there are several pieces that you need to be aware of. First, the Linux kernel has built-in components used for firewalls. These are called tables, and there have been multiple versions over the years. First was IP chains, followed by IP tables, and now NF tables. The second piece of a Linux firewall is a Linux service called a daemon. Let's start with the firewall daemon used on Ubuntu Linux, the uncomplicated firewall or UFW. When we talk about UFW, there are two parts. We have the daemon or service, and we have the tools we use to configure rules. In order for the firewall to function, the daemon must be running. From a terminal or shell, I can check that with the systemctl command. So I type systemctl status UFW. It shows the status is active. That's the firewall status from systemd's perspective. I can also execute a UFW command to get the status by typing sudo UFW status. It also shows it is active, but includes a list of rules currently being enforced. As you can see, we have two rules currently being enforced on the system. We have SSH traffic from anywhere over IPv4 or IPv6 being denied. If I want to change that, I do so with the UFW command. I'll execute UFW allow SSH and check the status again. As you can see, action has been updated to allow the traffic. Unlike the IP tables command you might be familiar with, the UFW command makes the rule persistent. They'll remain after a firewall restarts or the system reboots. On other Linux systems, such as Red Hat or OpenSUSE, the firewall D daemon is used. It has a different tool set as well. It uses the firewall-config GUI tool and firewall-cmd as a command line tool. Let's work with the command line tool. I'm on an OpenSUSE system, which is using Firewall D to manage firewall rules. It works with what are called zones. Each network device, referred to here as a network interface, on the machine is associated with a zone, and the rules of the zone dictate which traffic is allowed through the interface. In this case, we have one interface called ETH0. We can see if the firewall service is running with the sudo systemctl status firewall D command which tells us that the firewall is active. Let's see which zones are on this system by typing sudo firewall-cmd-get-zones. That shows the names of the zones, but it doesn't tell us which zones are currently being used. Using the sudo firewall-cmd-list-all-zones pipe less command, we see that the public zone is the only active one, and the one network interface called ETH0 is associated with that zone. Using that information, we can list services that are currently associated with a given zone by typing in sudo firewall-cmd-zone equals public-list-services. Right now, this machine doesn't allow SSH traffic through the interface associated with the public zone. Let's change that with the sudo firewall-cmd-zone equals public-add-service equals SSH. If we list the services in that zone, we now see SSH is allowed through. Using another firewall-cmd option, we can see just the zone's information. That command is sudo firewall-cmd-info-zone equals public. There's one other item about using the firewall-cmd utility. Unless you add the dash dash permanent option to your command, the change will only persist through the next restart of the firewall D daemon. As you can probably guess, there are many other variations of firewall commands and configurations you can use when you work with Linux firewalls. As with most network-related systems, practice and experience help you ensure firm understanding of Linux firewall tools and systems. That's it for this demonstration. In this demo, we showed you how to work with two of the most commonly used firewall daemons and their associated tools when you configure a Linux firewall.